Hey class, this is Mr. Woodbury. Just a short video to go through the main ideas from the problems in Chapter 9. I'm going to be doing a few problems from the Chapter 9 project using Stack Crunch so that we can get used to the steps. Okay. Uh, first problem is a confidence interval for a proportion. Um, and basically here, oops, okay, being asked to construct a confidence interval or give an estimate of a proportion of all CUS students who own an iPhone. Um, for a proportion, also remember the data are categorical. So here we'd ask the student, do you have an iPhone? Their answer would be yes or no. And look for this idea of 30 out of 125. This many out of that many. All right, let's go over to StatCrunch. And uh, the steps we want to take for a confidence interval for a proportion, stat, proportion, one sample with data, uh, with summary. The number of successes was 30. The number of observations was 125. 30 over 125 is p hat, the sample proportion. Uh, let's see here, we want confidence interval. It did say 95%, so we'll leave the level alone and never change the method, always leave that the same. When we click on compute, we get our confidence interval here in the lower right-hand corner. 0.1651 is the lower limit. 0.3149 is the upper limit. And we say we're 95% confident that the proportion of all COS students that own an iPhone is between 0.1651 and 0.3149. Let's move on to the second problem. Confidence interval for a mean. Uh, here again, we're being asked to construct a confidence interval. It says for the mean. Also, if you think about the data here, these would be numerical because we would be writing down the mileage for each car. Um, the sample information we need, sample size, N is 15. Sample mean, X bar is 17.9. And sample standard deviation, S is 3.9. Uh, we do need to make note of the level of confidence here. It was 95%. So we can go ahead and do this in StatCrunch. Hope I can remember all those numbers. Uh, this is under Stat, T Statistics, one sample. This time we have summary because I have the mean and standard deviation. But if we had the actual data, we would choose with data instead. So with summary. Uh, we want to write down the sample mean, I believe that was, uh, let's make sure, yeah, 17.9 for the mean, the standard deviation was 3.9, and the sample size was, let's see, 15 cars, so we'll type in 15 for the sample size. We wanted a confidence interval, so we click that radio button, it was 95%, so we'll leave that alone click compute and we're 95% confident that the mean mileage is between 15.74 and 20.06 rounded to two places. When you do these problems in my math lab or my stat lab just pay attention to where they ask you to round them. Okay. The other two types of problems uh, in chapter 9 involve uh, finding the appropriate sample size. The first one I'm going to show you is for a proportion um, a student wants to estimate the percentage of college students who smoke and we're asked for how large of a sample. Right? That is the clue that here we're looking for a sample size and not to estimate. Also, we don't have a sample to work with. 90% um, is the level of confidence and we want to be off by no more than 4.5%. That means that the margin of error is 0.045. Now in StatCrunch, we need to know the width of the interval, and that's two times the margin of error, which is 0 0.09. Okay. So in StatCrunch, uh, we can work this one through by clicking on the stat, proportion, one sample. This time we want the option power slash sample size, and we're going to be working with the sample size. 
Uh, click on the right tab for confidence interval width. Confidence level gets entered first, that's 0.9 or 0.90. The target proportion, if you had an estimate of what the proportion was, you would enter that here. We have no idea, so I'm going to leave that as 0.5. What that does is it give us, gives us the largest possible sample. The mistake we make is sampling too many, which is a better mistake than sampling too few. Okay, for the width, we want to type in our margin of error times 2. That was 0.09 leave sample size blank and when we click compute we get our sample size for the problem of 335. Let's head back to the problem. I know this was a proportion for a couple of reasons. One, uh, it talks about the sample proportion. Second, uh, we're looking for a percentage of students who smoke. The data would be categorical. Do you smoke? Yes or no? And finally, the margin of error is given as a percentage. That's another good clue. All right, let's go to the last problem I'll show you. Uh, this is when we're trying to estimate a mean and we look for the sample size. Okay. Um, how large of a sample is required? Tells me we're looking for the sample size, not the estimate. Um, we want the mean to be off by no more than two hours. That's the margin of error. Um, we also need an estimate of the standard deviation and an initial study showed that that was approximately 8.3 hours. Finally, again, you do need to know the level of confidence. This time, we want to be pretty confident, 99%. Back to StatCrunch. This one is under Stat Z statistics, so we don't use T. Uh, we're going to use Z for this one. One sample, again, sample size. Uh, click on the right tab for confidence interval width. Our confidence level this time was 0.99. We know that the standard deviation was given in the problem as 8.3. So I'm going to enter that, 8.3. And the width of the interval this time, um, the margin of error was 2. So the width would be two times that margin of error, or four. So let's go ahead and enter that. Again, leave the sample size blank and click Compute, and we get a sample size of 115. All right, so I hope that helps you um, construct a confidence interval when you're asked to construct a confidence interval or to make an estimate. Compute the sample size when you're not asked for the estimate, but instead how large of a sample will you need to ensure these particular results. You also need to know the difference between proportion and mean. Proportion, you want to think about is the data categorical? Also, um, look for clues. For a confidence interval, the sample will be this many out of that many. Uh, for a sample size problem, the margin of error is usually given as a percentage. When we're talking about means, the data will be numerical or quantitative, and um, pretty much the key number there is standard deviation. If you see standard deviation, you're pretty much dealing with a mean. However, you should be able to read through the problem and understand what it's asking for, not just look for key values. All right, good luck with this, everybody.